Today we're going to be talking about praying for an hour. There was a time where Jesus said, can you not tarry with me one hour? He was actually asking his disciples to pray with him for a whole hour. I'll be thinking myself, no, I don't think I could pray for a whole hour. I think I'll run out of things to say. So today what we're going to do, I'm going to show you an easy way to pray for an hour. We're going to cover like 12 stations of prayer. What do you mean by that? 12 different subjects. And if you just spend five minutes on each one, you could actually pray for an hour. I'm not saying you need to pray for an hour, but if you decided I want to spend an hour with the Lord in prayer and talk with him and hear him, you actually could. And you'll have a guide. Anyone can do this. So what I'm going to do is just cover these 12 places where you could actually spend five minutes in prayer. And by the time you're done, you have a whole 60 minutes. There's a scripture that says in Ephesians 6, 18, it says, and pray in the spirit on all occasions. So when should we pray? All the time and every occasion. That means we stay in connection, in connection with God with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people or all the believers. But what I want to focus on, it says pray on all occasions with all kinds of prayers. Interesting that there's different kinds of prayer. So let's start off. If I'm going to pray for an hour, where can I start? We can start off with first section, worship. This is where we're acknowledging who God is. We're praising him. We're worshiping him. Before we bring in a request before God, it's really important for us to build our faith. Who are we talking to? The creator of the universe, the king of kings, the Lord of lords, almighty God. What you could do at this time is put on some worship music, even just for five minutes, sing along, magnify God. The second place that we could go after we worship is Thanksgiving. Five minutes in Thanksgiving. What do we do here? Count our blessings. Thank God for what he's done. Jesus, I thank you for saving me. I thank you for setting me free. I thank you for your word. I thank you for my family. I thank you for my health. And you begin to thank God for five minutes. Then we move on to the next place. Praise. This is where we just acknowledge who God is. Praise. I, I learned this early in my, in, my, in my walk with God, that if I would just acknowledge God as being my healer, he'd be my healer. The, the scripture says this, acknowledge me in all of your ways and I will make your path straight. What he was saying is there's different things that you go through, but I'm the answer to all of it. So I'll praise God as my provider, as my healer, as all powerful as my source of wisdom. I'm magnifying God again, worshiping, and then I am praising, specifically talking about the attributes of my God. The next place we could go for five minutes. This is right now, we're right around 25 minutes, intercession. This is when we pray for others. We're not just praying for ourselves. In that scripture, it says, praying for all the Lord's people or praying for all believers. This is, you know, how many times has someone told you, hey, pray for me, and you say, yeah, okay, I'll pray for you, and you don't. So we need to write down their names, write down what, what we're committing to pray for, and we take it, this, we take those prayer requests into our prayer closet, and now we're interceding. Who can you intercede for? You can intercede for your family. You can intercede for the church. You could actually pray for someone. Intercession is kind of like this. You're take, you're standing for God, for them. You're standing. And there's some people that right now, they're in such spiritual warfare that they, have, they can't even pray. But what we're, we're going to do is say, they might not be able to pray, but I'm going to pray for my brother right now. He might be sick in the hospital and he might be dying, but he needs someone to intercede for him. That's where we come in. Someone might be so oppressed by demons and suicidal thoughts. Prayer is a last thing on their mind. They're just trying to live one more day, but we can intercede and fight those demons in the name of Jesus for them and help them get their victory. The next place we could go is petitions. And you're probably saying, when are we going to get to my petitions? Well, usually what we do is we start off with our list of what we want from God. 
But this is a great place. After we've prayed for others, we've worshiped, we've, we've magnified God. Now it's time to bring our petitions before God. I think we need to be real specific on what we're believing for. Right now, if you, and the more specific you are, the more powerful your prayer is. So whatever that need is, you bring it before the Lord. You might be discouraged that God set me free from this discouragement. Give me some peace. Give me some hope. Or you're, maybe you're going through a tough time in relationships. God, I can't fix these relationships on my own. Give me the wisdom to fix these, this relationship. Or I'm asking you, Lord, change my heart. Change your heart. Reconcile us. I need a miracle. Whatever that petition is. And you say, well, how do I come up with my list? This is what I've learned. Whatever you're worried about, whatever you're concerned about, write that down. You're not supposed to worry about it. You're supposed to pray about it. So what we do, what we do is we turn it back against the devil. The devil wants you to be worried. You say, no, nope, I'm turning it into a petition before God. Next place, where do we go? Declarations. This is a great time to declare victory over your life. Declarations can be something like this. I am more than a conqueror through Christ who strengthens me. That's a declaration. I could say something like this. All things work together for good for those who love God and called, are called according to his purpose. Amen. You can maybe declare, I am victorious. I am a man of God. I am a great leader. I'm a wonderful father. I thank you, Lord. It's all, you, I'm in your hands. I'm your son. I am holy. I just start declaring God's will over my life. Could it be that you're waiting for someone to declare, declare something for you? It's time for you to take, take control and, and use your spiritual authority and start declaring God's word over your life. Declare victory. Declare your leadership. Declare God's destiny over your life. Declaration. Also, the next place we stop is praying in the spirit. This is where if you have the gift of speaking in tongues, this is where you would speak in tongues and you would pray in the spirit. He said, I have not been baptized with the baptism of the Holy Spirit yet and I want to speak in tongues. Well, this would be a great time to ask God for the baptism of the Holy Spirit and let God's spirit flow through you. The purpose of praying in the spirit is that the Bible says that the spirit prays for things that we don't even know of. It sees things we don't see. So the Holy Spirit is actually praying through us. I need Jesus. I need the Holy Spirit praying through me, praying in the spirit. And when you're praying in the spirit, the devil doesn't understand anything you're praying. He cannot interfere with that prayer. The next place we go is warfare, warfare prayer. This is where we start binding and loosening. We go into the spiritual realm. We say, we bind this spirit that's over this city of poverty in the name of Jesus. We, I loose my sister in Christ from that spirit of suicide in the name of Jesus. I command every spirit of lust that's been trying to tempt me. I command you to go in the name of Jesus. I bind this spirit of, of division in the name of Jesus that's trying to operate in the church and operate in my ministry. You go to war. Go to war. This is where we rebuke demons. We cast them out. We bind them and we loose them in the name of, we loose people in the name of Jesus. The next place we go, meditation. Meditation. Just think about this. What's meditation? All you're doing is just stopping and maybe taking a scripture and meditating on it. And like I said earlier, maybe the scripture like this. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. And that's Psalms 23, 1. And you just start thinking about God's taking care of me. I'm one of his sheep. He's protecting me. He's leading me to green pastures beside still waters. And you start meditating on it and you start putting yourself in this picture, in this picture of the scripture and let God begin to tell you what it means to you. Get a little notebook. Let's hear from God. The next place is listening. So we're meditating on scripture, then we're listening. So communication with God is not a one-way street. We're talking, 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 talking. Now we're stopping and say, Holy Spirit, what do you have to say to me? And you'll begin to get revelation from God. You have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will teach you. He'll guide you. He'll lead you in this time, give you revelation, give you new ideas, 
give you creative ideas for maybe a challenge that you're facing today. Listen to the Holy Spirit. Then we end the prayer, and this is station number 12, with prayer, with, thanks, with praise and thanksgiving. So we go back to the beginning. And we just start thanking God. God, I just thank you for hearing me. I thank you, Lord, that every prayer that I made today that you've answered, I believe I've received it, Jesus. I thank you for everything you've done. I thank you for the victory. And I praise you that you're the alpha, you're the omega, you're the beginning, you're the end. And I, I fear not because you're with me. And you start glorifying God and thanking him for giving you the requests and hear in your prayer. It's very important. When you say thank you, you know what you, you know what happened? You just received it. Many people pray and they leave with worry. Leaving with worry is actually wasting time. You, you, don't, you don't really receive, believe that you received anything. But when you say thank you, you know what that means? I received it and I praise you and I glorify you. Thank you, Lord. And you know what that's called? Praying through. So there's 12 sections, worship, one, thanksgiving, two, praise, three, forgiveness, four, intercession, five, petition, six, declaration, seven, praying the spirit, eight, warfare, prayer, nine, meditation, 10, listening, 11, and end prayer with thanks, praise and thanksgiving, 12. That's one hour if you just spend five minutes with each one of them. And you could pray standing up, walking around your block, you could walk around your room, however you want to, on your knees, whatever. Um, you could put on some worship music the whole time, but you actually could pray for an hour. I've done it, and if I've done it, you can do it, because I get, I, sometimes I just get distracted pretty easy. But I found if I do this, most, most of the time when I practice this, I don't even get to number 12, because I'll, I'll just get to number five or six, and, and it'll be the hour already. So practice this in, in this time of holy warriors, and watch it change your life forever. You're going to learn how to pray for a whole hour as you practice this. God bless you. Let's pray for one hour. So if Jesus asks you, could you not tarry one hour? You go, yes, I could. I got the, I got the 12 places that I could pray. God bless you. Love you. Let's, let's do some warfare right now in prayer and get some victories. <music>